Hi, I'm India Otto, and this is 1v1. I'm joined today with USC guard and my teammate, Aaliyah Gales. Thanks for, Thanks for uh, having me, Otto. Of course, anytime. So, your story is widely known. You've shown tremendous fortitude in returning from a near-death act of violence. As you've continued to heal and with the passage of time, how has being a survivor changed your life on and off the court? Good question. Um, well, this is start like off the court. It definitely taught me a lot of maturity and like how I am as a person. And I realized like realizing how your life goes is very important and how important you are to everybody else. And the support I had just when everything happened. Um, as you know, Coach Lindsay was like the first person to fly out there and come to see me. Um, I can say that means a lot to me off the court because it shows like everybody cares, shows like everybody, you know, still loves me for who I am, um, don't matter what happened. On the court, it just, it made me eager to get back on the court, like, felt like something was taken away, but then it was just like, do I want to give up, do I want to keep going, and I chose that passion, like, I don't want to stop, I want to keep playing basketball, so, yeah, like I said, it taught me a lot of things on and off. You're obviously still writing your story. But thus far, what has been your favorite USC memory? Freshman year, when I finally got to hospital, I, I think you remember this moment, yeah. when uh, I wanted to surprise my teammates. They didn't, they had no idea that I was coming. Oh, you, you guys didn't have yeah, no idea we was didn't. coming. And um, I was like, I told my dad, I was like, I don't, I don't want the walker. Like, I want to show them that I can walk. So like, I hit up one of the coaches before and uh, I was like, I'm coming to practice, don't let you guys know. Yeah. And like, hey man, and I was like wobbling a little bit. I just seen excitement on everybody's face and they, like everybody started running towards me. And it was just like, that was my favorite memory because like it was family, like, it was my first time being able to walk to you guys and like, you know, see you guys practice or whatever. Um, yes, that's, I feel like that's top, that's the, my yeah. top one. That was one of my favorite moments yeah. too. I mean, that's like what life's about. Yeah, that was like We iconic. didn't expect to like see yeah. you walking like that. And that was awesome. It's so heartwarming. Yeah. Who has been most influential in your life? Uh, You're I, a big family person, so. Yeah, I can definitely say my father. Um, he's always been there since day one. And like he, he taught me a lot of things, like being able to control myself and like how to kind of fish around when things are getting hard and be able to understand everybody's feelings and understand my own. So I could definitely say he had a big impact in my life. What do you hope to leave people with who hear your story? A positive mindset and to make sure they believe they can do anything, like everything in the world. Just make sure like they know that there is somebody out there waiting for them if they do need somebody or like a shoulder to cry on anybody. Um, just to make sure like they're not alone, you know, um, there's a lot of support. So that's what I kind of want to get out of my journey, my story, um, and kind of just influence and inspire youth and like maybe people that's probably going through the same thing as me. Probably not the same like traumatic injury, but at least like the same mindset or like at least the same problems and like they could take that and like if she could do it, I can do it too. That's really powerful. Why do you wear the number three? Yeah, um, I wear the number three because of my grandpa. Um, he That was his favorite number. And believe it or not, I was number five at first. Really? Yeah. I, know. Uh, I was number five at first because my dad um, was number seven and he uh, likes even or odd numbers. Yeah. So, um, but uh, number three, because me and my grandpa would just talk about it all the time. And it's kind of weird because, like, it'd be some things that, like, make sense. One, it kind of rhymes with the, my logo, H3, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, two, it's like, I was always dedicated around, like, three things. Like, it was, I could either be with, like, my cousins, it'd be, like, three of us. Oh. Or I could have, like, my, it's crazy. I was eating cereal, and I left three, like, little cereal bites and the milk or whatever. Okay. It's just like weird. I feel like it's a golden number for me. Yeah, so. there's a lot of three coincidences. Yeah. And AG3 does have a really nice ring to it. Nice. Yeah, it was meant to be. Who is on your Mount Rushmore basketball players, NBA or WNBA? Who are your goats? My goats, okay. WNBA, Candace Parker. Always loved her since I was a kid. 
um, NBA. Magic Johnson is because like his also his IQ and the way he passed the ball and get his teammates going before he gets going. Yeah. Um, he's very a pass first guard, and I feel like I kind of idol him after that. Yeah. Um, AI, but just because his like athleticism and how like he can break down a defender and still help like his teammates get better and um yeah I feel like those two big big impact your game has a lot of similarities yeah. so those are good choices what about current like NBA goat I mean I feel like this is everybody's you know goat but it's always been mine also Kobe Bryant of course um but current current I definitely have to say Kason Wallace uh, if you don't know him, he's okay. He's OKC, and that's kind of my homeboy. So I'm glad he's out there making it. Nice, that's awesome. Obviously, we've had a lot of incredible celebrities and people come to our games this year. What you know, celebrity that's come to our games has been kind of most like you've been most in awe of, or thought that was the coolest? I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot, yeah. and I've been wow since. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say Will Ferrell. That was really cool. That was tough because he used to be having me cracking up He's on so TV. Funny. So it's him coming to our game, like yeah. watching him like come to our locker room and yeah. I'm standing in front of him, I'm hugging him, like that's kind of my deal. Um oh, what else? For definitely Kaylani. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and Sweetie. Okay, I, yeah. Top three. Sweetie, Kaylani, and Wilfro. Okay, cool. And now who actually zero. Zero was no, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, Holes is a great movie. Yeah. It's childhood. Yes, yeah, right there. Okay, so who, who would you want to see come to a game that hasn't yet come? Oh, Little Dirk. Yeah. Little <laughs> How's that even a question? <laughs> little Dirk. That was a rapid fire question yeah. right there for little you, Little Dirk. Dirk. I okay. just need him one time. Yeah. That's well, let's try to make that happen. Awesome. Little Dirk, if you're watching, come to our game. Smirk. I need you. <laughs> If you had to face one team that we played this year in the tournament again, who would it be? I definitely have to say UCLA because mm. I was not there when they all beat them. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I definitely feel like we need to replay that. We're going to have to run that back. Yeah. It's a great choice. Going off of UCLA a little bit, um, it's been a long time since both UCLA and USC have been in the top ten together. What does this say about the state of basketball in L.A.? That's a great question. Um, I feel like now both teams have incredible players, so I feel like both teams are getting like a lot of attention just in South Central. Um, and we're both putting each other on the map for sure. And um, I can see that LA actually has confidence in both schools and how like kind of how both teams bring out their energy. Like you can see how it was many, many people at yeah. our games yeah. against those two. And I feel like each so. of the teams bring out the fans in LA. Yeah. And it's been a minute since, like, yeah. yeah. So some rapid fire questions. Question number one, who's the worst DJ on the team? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you not giving ox to? See, <laughs> Carice. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> her music is a little um, like. I'm going to be hearing Afro beats. All day if yeah. I give her the ox, yeah. so no. Favorite pair of basketball shoes? Curry's. Do you have a specific, like? I love all of them. All of them. Yeah. Which WNBA player would you compare your game to? Ooh, Chance Gray. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so you've done a great job answering questions, but now I'm going to give you the floor to ask me a question. The floor to ask you a question? Yeah, you can ask me whatever. Oh, this took a turn. Okay. <laughs> um, out of all five years you've been in college. Yeah. Which year impacted you, and why do you think that year inspired you? Well, this year has been my favorite year at SC by far. Um, I, I mean, I tell like everybody that, um, not just because of like our success, our success on the court. Um, so I would say this year, but honestly, probably the COVID year. Mm -hmm. I think that that was just unprecedented times for everybody. Um, it was difficult. I think that. I mean, we were here on campus. We were like the only, I think, us in like football. There was like only a couple sports on campus. Um, you're obviously living like the same day over and over. Yeah. Like you can't go do anything outside. Like it was like Groundhog's Day, like practicing all that. So I would say that that year probably 
um, I like learned the most about myself. Um, and that kind of propelled me forward. Yeah. Nice. So I think that was my my sophomore year. Yeah. Thanks for watching 1v1 with India Otto and Aaliyah Gales. Thank you. Fight on. <laughs>